Oh, I had to go get away to get it back home, and I appreciate y'all being patient with me. And uh, I've enjoyed the little bit of time that I've had here. Appreciate y'all y'all allowing Caleb to preach earlier in the day. It's a real blessing for me as a as a preacher, but not just as a preacher, but as a father to have him preach with me in the same service. And I appreciate that. I'm gonna be looking in our Bibles at Daniel chapter number eight. Let me ask you this question. Everybody look up here. Everybody look up here. Right up here. Everybody, everybody looking? All right. How many of you believe in God, right? Now look here, let me, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going to do this, let me do this. Just be honest with me, don't lie to me because you're in church. It's okay, ain't nobody going to say nothing to you. How many of you believe there's a God? Good, good. How many of you believe there's a heaven? Amen. Now, let me ask you this question. How many of you believe there's a devil? How many of you believe there's a hell? Very good. I'm going to preach a message this afternoon. Here's the title of the message that I'm going to preach for you. And it is this. What the devil wants. What the devil wants. And I'm going to be reading out of the book of Daniel, the Old Testament, chapter number 1. So I'm going to read to you and then I'll, I'll try to share as fast as I can what God's laid on our heart. And uh, I, I, want you to, I want you to pay attention. I want you to listen and let God speak, not just what I say, but what God speaks to your heart. So I, I want to encourage you to listen for just a few minutes. All right, in the book of Daniel, chapter number one, the Bible says this, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, into Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, with part of the vessels of the house of God which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children, in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace whom, and, and whom they might teach the learning and, and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For, uh, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, Belteshazzar and to Hananiah of Shadrach. Anybody ever heard of Shadrach? You, how many of you in here ever heard of Shadrach? Shadrach, all right. And to Mishael of Meshach, you ever heard of Meshach? All right, some of you. Uh, let's see, and of uh, and to Azariah of Abednego. How about Abednego? It ain't Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Do you know? Just just right off the top of you, that was not their names. That was not their names, and that's important. The Bible said this in verse number 8, and here's where we'll finish our reading. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And that is that he might not get involved in the sin of the people of the land where he was living. Now real quick, if I go over this real quick, I, I want to share with you. I want to give you three things real quick and we'll be done. I, I, I want to tell you what the devil wants out of you. And I want to tell you what you can do to prevent that. And I, I want it to be a help to you. But what we have to understand here is that the children of Israel were taken captive. In other words, there was another king that came against them. And he, 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 he uh, 
He went to war against the city of Jerusalem, the children of Israel, and the Bible says he besieged the city, <coughs> or he sat around it where they couldn't come in or go out, and he finally took it over, and we find that when he did that, he wanted to change some things. And here's the deal. Most of y'all, and I hope most, if not all of y'all, have some pretty good parents. Good people, guardians, parents, aunts, uncles, papas, mimis, whatever they may be, that are looking after you, trying to raise you up in a Christian way, and trying to teach you right things. And what you're going to see as you get older, and you're not, some of you younger, or maybe you teenagers are seeing this, and, and some of you older preteens, if I can say it that way, are seeing some of these things, but they want to change everything about who you are. The devil wants to change who you are and who God wants you to be. The first thing that I want you to see as I look in this passage of Scripture, we talked about how Nebuchadnezzar laid siege to the city of Jerusalem. But the Bible says the Lord gave Jehoiakim, and this was part of a chastisement, or God was whipping his youngins because they got out of line. And part of what happened was he took part of the vessels of the house of the Lord. Now what he did was he went into the temple and he went into the the church, we'll call it a church, it wasn't what they call it, they call it a church, and he took some things out of the church, and he took them back to his place, and he wanted to use them in service for his God. Now, we don't have a lot of things like they did in the temple, but here's just a few things that we could take that the devil wants to take and try to use. Where's your uh, offering plates at, Brother John? Over here. All right. He wants to take some things from you guys and use it for himself. Now, who knows? Everybody knows what this is. All right. What do we do with this right here? We put money. What does that money go for? It goes for God. That's a good answer. I like that. It is used in the service of the Lord. That's what it's used for. And this, this is in, in a type of vessel that we use in this church as a form of worship. You may not understand this right now. When your parents, grandparents, whatever, your guardians, they put money in here. They're not doing it because they have to. They're doing it because they want to, to worship God. And then that money is taken and it's used. It's used to, y'all were building a nice, new, beautiful church. I was able to go in and see a little while ago and come along beautifully. And I can't wait to be in service in there. But the devil would like to take that same money that y'all would give and use for God and use it in an ungodly way. Did you know that? He'd like to take that and, and use it maybe to to buy drugs with or to buy alcohol with or to buy some kind of ungodly magazine or watch some ungodly on your telephone or your TV. He'd like to use it like that. So in that sense, he's, he's taking something that should be purposed for God and using it in his own service. He wants to change that. I thought about this too. I don't know, I know y'all been exposed to this to some degree, but I hold in my hand, everybody, everybody knows what this is? What is this? It? It is, it, it's not just a Bible, it's the Bible. How many of you can guess what kind it is? It's a what? What does that stand for? That stands for a King James. Now I'm old fashioned, I know Terry is too. I know you folks, most you folks are, but you know what the devil wants to do? He wants to take this book right here, this blessed book, and listen, I, you said KJV. Yeah. I'm not going to be rude about this. I don't like to call it a King James Version. i tell you what I like to call it. I like to call it a King James Bible. Amen. It's not a version. I, I want you to get this. It's not a version of the Bible. It is the Bible. That's what this preacher believes. It's not, it's not just another version of all the ones that are out there. It's the one. 
Amen. And the more I study it, the more I read it, it proves itself over us. But the devil wants to take this and he wants to corrupt it. And now when you go to the Bible story, you can stand and look for hours at all of the different versions of what they call the Bible. And you you get confused as I'll get out trying to figure out what if you want to buy a Bible, which one do I get? Can I say this? Just stick with the stuff that's worked for a while. Amen. Amen. Stay with this old King James Bible. And I'll promise you, hey, you'll, you'll be tempted. Caleb talked about how you'd be tempted a while ago to do different things. You're going to be tempted to get into all different kind of versions, all different. I, hey, stick with the things that work. This is a vessel that God has used for over 400 years. I heard yesterday, amen, that there was about four youngins, if I'm not mistaken, got saved up here yesterday. And I guarantee you, amen, the preaching that was done, the teaching that was done, was done out of this old King James Bible, amen. I'm going to tell you something. This Bible right here will help you. So I, I, want, I want you to leave here, and you, you tell anybody you want to. I don't care. You say that old preacher said that King James Bible was the only one there is. That's what I believe. That's the way I believe. I'm old-fashioned, out of style, out of date with things of the day. But I tell you, I like things that I know work, amen? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you, that's one of those things that when we read about Nebuchadnezzar and how he took the vessels of the Lord's house and he brought them into, into his kingdom and put them in his God's house, he wanted to change those and use them in a different manner than what they were intended. There's a number of different things that we could talk about, but I want to get on into some other things that... I want to share with you and get you out of here as quick as I can. But let me say something. You've got leaders in this church like uh, 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 Brother Johnny, Brother Terry, different men and women in this church that are leaders in this church. And, and can I tell you the things that Caleb was right this morning, how they've instructed you and talked to you over this weekend and, and there's more to come. Can I tell you that those things, what they're telling you, some of those things you'll, you'll think about and say, well, that may be silly. But can I tell you that everything that they have told you, what they're trying to do is help you and save you and, and save you in a couple of ways. Anybody in here that's lost, they want to see you saved. Hey, man, they want to see you as a child of God, uh, 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 to join out with Jesus Christ, born again. They want to see that's the primary thing. But secondly, save you from a lot of trouble down the road. Because I'm telling you, when you allow the devil to use the things of God in an ungodly way, it will mess up your mind, it will mess up your body, it will mess up your home, it will mess up everything about you. And you probably know some older folks who are really messed up, amen, in some different ways and different things, that at one time were good youngins, were good people. The devil somehow changed that. And I want to share that with you this afternoon. Alright, now, there they are. Y'all help me keep up with my glasses. I lay them down and I'll lose them. I'll be wandering all over this place like, like a ball in high weeds looking for my glasses here a little bit. Alright, now let's look at something else. I want you to look at a, a, another particular verse. We looked at, at verse 1. He, uh, they came in there and they took over the city of Jerusalem. They took, the, they took the vessels out of the house of God and brought them in to the treasure house of the God of Nebuchadnezzar. And here's what Here's what Nebuchadnezzar said. The, Neb the king said unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuch, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel. Now I want you to see that right there, hear that right there. He said he wanted certain of the children of Israel. You know what he's looking for? You know the devil wants to get right early? You guys. I mean, really. The devil wants to get you guys at a young age and get you messed up in a whole host of different things. And, and, and listen, what the devil really wants is to ruin your life. But I want to share with you what I, what I see that the Bible says about these children of Israel. Now I thought about this. I'm going to share this verse with you right quick over out of the book of 2 Timothy. And I've already mentioned you've got some good parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, whatever, that are your guardians and, and looking over you that are trying to instruct you. And if you go into the book of 2 Timothy, we find that Paul was writing to a young preacher by the name of Timothy. And I want you to listen to what he said. He was talking to Timothy, and he was writing to Timothy, and he was remembering Timothy. And he said, when I call to remembrance 
the unfeigned faith that is in thee. In other words, Timothy at a young age. Now y'all may think this is crazy. This is my son. Some of y'all didn't know that earlier today. But he's my son, and I'm very proud of him. He's 16 years old. 16 years old, and he's already, daddy didn't talk him into preaching. Matter of fact, daddy tried to talk him out of it, just so you know. I told him if he could get out of it, he ought to get out of it. If he, could, if he couldn't get out of it, he ought to jump in it with both feet. And that's just the way it is, because I figured like this, if he could get out of it, that wasn't God's calling him anyway. But I want you to understand, he's a, not because he's my son, but just because of him and his age, he is a real good example of what God can do with you Amen. at a young age. You don't have to be 50 like me and Terry and John. You don't have to be an old man or an old woman for God to be able to use you. God wants to use you now. You can be a help to somebody, somewhere, some way, somehow, right now. And that's what God wants with you. But it ain't what the devil wants. Now I want you to listen to what it says about the, about what he said about Timothy. He said, he said, the unfeigned faith which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Every one of y'all in here that has an understanding of some things in the Bible, you, you understand a little bit about, you understand about creation, about Adam and Eve, about Noah and the flood, about Jesus' birth, Jesus birth uh, the virgin birth of, of Jesus. You know about how Jesus lived. You know about the cross. You know about how he was buried in the tomb and how he was resurrected. A lot of y'all know that stuff. You know why you know that? Because somebody loved you and wanted you to know about him. Somebody loved you enough and cared enough to take time to give that knowledge to you to help you. So I, I, want, I don't want you to take that for granted. I want you to consider that and realize Somebody loves you. When Brother Terry gets up here and preaches, when your Sunday school teachers teach, what they are doing, they are doing because they love you. I drove all, and, that, and it's it's not like a half me, but it's a good little ways to drive. I came up here because I love you. I love Brother Terry, and I love you guys, and I want to try to help you. But he said they spend people in your life that have blessed you, Timothy, and given you some things that I can see in you. And then I want to go back so we, we realize that there's somebody above us trying to help us, but here's what the king, Ash, or, or king Nebuchadnezzar saw or what he was looking for in these youngins of Israel. Listen to verse number four. We find four things right here in this verse, and I'll try to go through them really quick. But first of all, we find the Bible says that he said that he wanted children in whom was no blemish. What that means is they was they had good morals. How many of you in here been told not to lie? Right? How many of you in here been told not to steal? How many of you in here been told not to hit on people and beat people up? You better listen. Hey, those are just good morals. And he was looking for folks that he was looking for some of them youngs that had been instructed that way, not. Not just those that had no blemish, but he said, well, favor. Hey, you know what? What that, what that means is they, they, they look good. They're good looking youngs. Y'all a little bit dirty from playing outside. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Y'all won't get dirty. But y'all a good looking bunch. With the exception of John. Y'all are, are a good looking bunch. I mean, really. And, 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 and I mean that. And, and God has, has given you something there. Hey man, that's a blessing to you. You just a good looking bunch. That don't mean everybody, all you girls are beauty queens and all you fellas in here are Mr. Universe, but you all a good looking bunch. And don't let, don't ever let nobody tell you you ain't. Don't ever let nobody put you down on stuff like that. Hey, you're one of God's young. So, so you're a, you're a good, you're a good looking young. And that's, that's something that the king was looking for. Not only that, that's the second thing. But he said, skillful in all wisdom. Well, that means they understood how to live right. Now, I've done ask you about some things y'all been taught. Y'all been taught not to steal, not to lie, not to be. Hey, that's part of being skillful in wisdom, knowing how to live right. 
Now y'all, now listen to me. I'm gonna try to help Terry and John. I'm gonna try to help the adults out here. When y'all get out of here in just a little while, and y'all get over there and eat all them tacos, and then you get turned loose to play, you know what y'all need to do? Y'all need to make sure you're nice to each other. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, that that is something you know to do that, right? You know that. But sometimes we get a little selfish. We want to, we want to do something different. But that is something that God has given you through your parents that is a blessing to you. Because I'm telling you, I've seen a lot of youngins in, in this kind of number that ain't near as settled and quiet as y'all are. Y'all good youngins, and I appreciate that. But that's what the king was looking for. Third thing, they were they were skillful and all wisdom. They understood how to live right. The fourth thing that I see right there, they were cunning and knowledge. They knew how to make right decisions. They knew how to make right. Some of y'all here in just a little while, and even when this weekend's over, y'all gonna have to go out of here, and y'all gonna go, and you're gonna be out in the, in the world around town and here, and y'all gonna have some decisions to make. Should I? Take that piece of bubble gum that's laying there and put it in my pocket or not? Should, should. They knew how to make right decisions. That's the kind of youngins, children, the Bible says here, that King Nebuchadnezzar was looking for. Fifth thing, they were understanding science. Hey, they just smart kids. How many youngins in here know how to operate a computer a little bit? I mean, y'all smarter than I am. Do you know that? You have to work on school. You have to work. See, I didn't have that when I was in school. You're smarter than me. I don't know. But but listen, so I bet y'all can do things on computers and phone. I can't do. I mean, y'all are not. Y'all are smart kids, and that's the kind of children that the devil wants to get a hold of. So you need to know that. And then the last thing that I see here in verse number four is they were understanding science, but they were able to stand in the king's palace. Now, we're going to talk about just for a minute who the king is. Who's the king? God. All right? Jesus is also called the king. He's God as well. But do you know that you guys... And especially all of you youngins that have trusted the Lord as your Savior, you have the ability to stand in the presence of the King. And I tell you that the greatest joy that I have in my life is being able to pray, being able to talk to the Lord and hear the Lord speak to me through His Word, being in His presence, just like being in this church, and, and, and singing old songs and, 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 and praying and preaching and just enjoying the good fellowship of God. Can I tell you, that's a blessing that a lot of young folks your age don't have. A lot of young and your age don't have anything close to that. And the devil wants to take that and change it and take it away from you. He wants to change that. That's what the devil wants. Now I want us to look on down here. Now I'll give you six things right quick that the devil wants out of you. And I, here's what I want to say. Being a Christian is not always easy. Matter of fact, it's, it's sometimes it's really hard. Because here's what happens. The devil will make fun of you. He'll make you feel like an outsider. He'll make you feel like nobody wants to be around you. And if you'll let that bother you, if you let that bother you, it'll get you to a place in your life where you no longer want to feel that. And he'll change who you are. Now he can't do that without you letting him. I want you to know that. But that's what he wants to do. He wants to make you feel so bad of, of, be, of being a Christian that it just changes who you are. Now I'm going to give you four things real quick that, that he wants to change. And we find this here in the scripture. The Bible says in the end of verse number four, 
and who, after he went through all of these things that he was looking for in these children, he said that he might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. First of all, I want to say he wants to change who you are in your education. Caleb touched on that a little bit. Can I tell you, I, I know I'll be, back, I'll be backed up on this. You're going to learn things in school that ain't right. You really are. You're going to learn that the earth is billions and billions of years old and you're going to learn that that at one time there was nothing, that it exploded and it came into being and over billions of years that that somehow you developed from a tadpole to a frog to a turtle to... I don't even know, know what all they say. But that's called the theory of evolution. Can I, I just want to say it just like this. When you hear that, that's a lie. Amen. That's a lie. Amen. I know you want to think that everything you're taught is right and correct, but it ain't always so. The devil wants to change your mind through education. And it's sad, it's sad, but it's true. But in our day and time, the education system is geared in such a way to where that, that's usually how it works. A lot of young ones will go to school, get out of school, and go to college, get out of college. They might have been good church going young ones when they were younger. But when they go through all of that schooling and they hear all of that stuff over and over and over again, it gets into their head and it changes how they think. And then what they do is, the next, how they check, they want to tell you that this is a lie. They don't want you, really don't matter what version it is, they, they'll tell you it's a lie. But can I tell you that God's Word is the truth? God's Word is truth. So when these preachers, teachers, these people that, that God has blessed you with to have in your life, they try to tell you and teach you things from the Word of God. Listen, believe those folks. Because what, they what they're trying to do is help you come to know Jesus better than you do. And to know His Word. So if you ever hear anything like that and you don't believe it or it don't sound right, hey, make sure you talk, talk to one of your sons, talk to your mommy, your daddy, pop on me, whatever. And, or talk to preacher Terry, talk to Uncle Johnny, call him Uncle Johnny, that'd be good. Talk to some of these leaders in the church and let them help you explain and understand. Don't get messed up by hearing things that are wrong. When you don't understand something, question. Even when you hear something from the Bible and you don't understand it, ask somebody to help you and give you understanding. Don't just, don't just believe everything, and especially when you hear it and it sounds like it, it's not lined up with the Bible. Listen, the devil wants to change your mind about who God is. And what he really wants to do is make you believe there is no God. So he wants to change your mind. In he wants to change your mind in education. And we find that he, he said he wanted to teach the learning of the Chaldeans and also the tongue. You know what the devil wants to do to you? He wants to change your speech. Hey Amen. How many of you know what cussing is? Raise your hand. You know what cussing is? How many of you know it's wrong? It's wrong. You know why you know it's wrong? Because somebody took that book right there and told you it was wrong. And the devil wants you to think that it's all right. I've heard this. Well, it's just a word. Well, it's not just a word. It's curse. And the Bible talks about cussing and cursing. And listen, it's ugly. It's ugly. And it's ungodly. And it is not what a Christian or how a Christian young person should talk. So let me say something. Y'all going to be tempted with that. I know y'all. Because I was. And the devil would just, it'd just tickle him to death. Amen. To hear y'all letting out big oaths and big curse words and taking God's name in vain. Hey, the, the devil wants to do that to you. So we see that's just exactly what Nebuchadnezzar, when he got those children of Israel, he wanted to do that. He wanted to change their speech. I, a lot of young'uns, 
Now, some of y'all may not think too much of this. This maybe is a me thing. But it seems like a, a, a lot of our younger generation have lost a lot of respect. I want you to know, you've noticed some of these older fellas, some of these older ladies. You'll never hear, let me say this. Uh, this, this aggravates me to no end. You boys, when you grow up and you get a wife, don't you ever call her old lady. Amen. 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 Because it's disrespectful. Amen. It's ugly. And I would encourage you, young lady, don't call your husband old man. Amen. He might whoop you. <laughs> Learn, I mean, really. I know it's funny, kind of funny, but it's a serious matter. Hey, you young fellas and you young ladies, when God puts a man or a woman in your life, a husband or a wife, hey, that's a gift that God has given you. You be respectful of that. Hey, your pastor's not dog. Hey, man, your dog, sir. Hey, man, he's not dude. He's not dude. That's dude Terry. That's not dude, hey, man. That's Pastor Terry. Preacher Terry. I don't know how he, I like that. To me, that's, that's how I grew up. That's what I heard. I believe that's biblical. Amen. I believe that the Bible teaches us we ought to respect that. But they don't, the devil don't care a thing about that. He just soon had you, had you be disrespectful and talk dirty and uh, low down and no good. And he wants to change that about you. Don't let the devil change how you speak. Speak like a Christian. Speak like somebody that knows God. Not only in your education and your speed, speech, but look here. I'll have to talk about this for just a minute. But the Bible says this. In the king, in verse 5, appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now what some of y'all might not know what some of y'all might not know is that when Moses got the Ten Commandments, he got a lot of other laws too. Part of the laws that Moses got was regulating the things that they could eat. Not only regulating how they could eat, but even in some cases, how they actually fixed it. So these Jewish, or these Israelite children, the Bible talks about here, they had laws and they had commandments that God had given them that they had to stick to. That was part of how they lived their religious, their God life. Now I want to say something. I've had this discussion and there's a lot of things and a lot of traditions that we hold on to and tradition's not all bad. Tradition can be good. The Bible says that we ought to hold on to the good ones. But can I say that as Christians we have standards that we ought to live up to? We are not bound. We're not bound. I, 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 I wrote this down. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted to take them over to Nebby's Barbecue and Clam Shack. But they couldn't have either one of those things. So what he wanted to do was change their way of thinking about the way they lived their everyday life. How they lived a life that was given to following God. Now I want to tell you, I, I keep bringing this up, but I, I think it's important that you hear these folks that are in your life that are, that are older than you, that are trying to help you, what they're trying to do is help you live a life that's pleasing to God. That's what they want. I know that. If I thought different, I wouldn't come up here. I believe this church is trying to help you know God better. And you're going to hear things that the world says, well, you don't need to pay attention to that. That's like, that's like how you dress. Amen? How you dress. That's important for girls as well as it is for boys. How you, how you talk, we talked about a little bit. I mean, we've got standards and we got, we got guidelines in God's Word that tell us how that we ought to conduct ourselves and live our lives. And the devil wants to take all of those 
and throw them out the window and tell you this. Just do what you want to do. That's what the devil wants to teach you. Just do what you want to do. If it feels good, just do that. Don't matter who it hurts or how, how it makes people mad. Listen, just do what you want to do. And that's what Nebuchadnezzar wanted to do to these children of Israel by changing their dietary laws or how they ate. He wanted them to go against their godly heritage and, ha and their godly raising. So we see already that he wanted to change them in their education, in their speech, in how they followed God. And then one last thing that he wanted to change about them was this, their identity. I mentioned this to you y'all, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now most of us have probably heard those names. But the ones that we're less familiar with are their God-given names, Hanani, Michelle, and Azariah. You, as a Christian, are identified with Christ. When you tell somebody that you are a Christian, what you are actually saying to them is this. I'm trying to live like Christ lived. I'm trying to live to please God just as Christ or Jesus pleased God. He wanted to change their identity. Some of y'all are going to grow up, and I, and I hate the thought of this, and it, 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 it bothers my heart. Some of y'all are going to grow up, and everything you've heard today, what you've heard yesterday, what you'll hear tomorrow, you're going to, you're going to essentially do this. You're going to throw it in a wastebasket in the trash can. And you're going to leave it behind and you're going to think, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not living that way. And you're going to go out and you're going to make some bad choices. You're going to believe some wrong things. And you're going to live, you're going to live a life like that and you're going to get older, you may get 50, 60 years older and look back and think, man, I really messed that thing up. I really messed that thing up. I'll tell you this real quick. I went through a period in my life for about seven years. And I was raised in church. My daddy, my daddy was a preacher. Granddad was a preacher. And I had been raised and I've been taught all of the things that y'all were being raised and taught. And I reached a point in my life where I was smarter than my dad, smarter than granddad. I smarted all of them. And I threw everything that I had been taught in the trash can. And I said, I'm going to live my way. I'm going to do what I want. And for about seven years, for about seven years, if I even had one of these in my house, it never got opened. And for seven years, I wasted my life. All of that thing, all of those things that I threw in the trash can, all of that learning that I had got as a child growing up, I, I would have been just as good to throw myself in the trash can as I would have thrown those things that I was taught. Let me tell you something. What y'all are being taught and what y'all are hearing is not throwaway stuff. It's stuff that will help you all your life. And the devil wants to change that. The devil wants to take that away from you. Now real quick, here's what I want to tell you, and I'm done. <clears throat> what can you do about that? Well, in the book of Matthew, chapter number 6, and verse number 33, in the book of Matthew 6 and 33, Jesus said this, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness... And all these things shall be added unto you. Y'all got a lot of things that you want. And as you get older, those things you want, they get a lot more expensive. And you got to work a lot harder to get them. Mom and daddy don't buy them no more. And the devil's going to put a lot of stuff out there that you want, you don't need. And you're going to spend, you're going to spend a lot of time working and doing whatever you got to do to get all those things that you want that at the end of the day, they're just stuck. It's just stuff. 
and it all rots, it all deteriorates, it all breaks, like that old truck I'm driving. It'll all break on you sooner or later. Now there's nothing wrong, don't misunderstand the preacher, nothing wrong with having things. But a lot of times, we let those things become more important to us than the things of God. Now chances are real good that what, I, what I'm talking about right now, some of the adults are very familiar with. Very familiar with. And they, can, they can tell you experiences about things of that nature. But Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. This one of them points, I, I, hopefully I'm glad he is, but I hopefully wish he was my son. Just because I say this. When I look at a young man, 16 years old, who has surrendered his life. Now he's just a, he'll be a sophomore in high school this year. And he ain't got a lot of friends that are, that are dedicated to the Lord the way he's given his life to the Lord. That's not going to be easy. If there's one thing I've told him, it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. Listen to me, gang. When you put God first in your life, it may not always be easy, but it will always be worth it. it. May not always be easy, but it'll always be worth it. He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And he said, All these things shall be added unto you. Can I tell you this? My wife has an uncle. And I remember he used to say this a lot. I'd hear him testify in church. And he said this. He said, God has supplied all of my needs and most of my wants. Now that's an accurate statement. God has given me I have everything that I need, God has given me. And a lot of the things that I wanted, God has given me. I'm a blessed man. Right. Amen. God's been good to me. And I know why. It's not because not because I'm some kind of super saint, but I promised God that I would live for him. And I'm I'm not perfect and I make mistakes and we will. But I try to live for him and he blesses me. He said he would. He said he would. Now the world can't do that for you. What the world gives you will cost you a lot of money, time, energy. It costs you a lot of everything. It can cost you your life. But what God gives you, you'll see that God provides in ways that are miracles. <laughs> miracles. God will do in your life. So here's what Daniel did. Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Here's how Daniel kept from falling into what Nebuchadnezzar wanted. Verse number 8, the Bible says that Daniel purposed in his heart. Some of you today, some of you today, need to make a decision that comes from the heart that you are going to live for God. Some of you in here this afternoon are, are lost, you're not saved, and you need to be saved. You'll never be able to live for God and know the joy of salvation, how good it is to be saved until you give your heart to God. The Bible says that Daniel purposed in his heart in verse number 8 that he would not defile himself with the, king's, with, with the portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. He took a stand. Daniel took a stand and said, I'm not going to do this. I can't do this. God will not allow it. And because, and this Daniel, some, something Daniel might have said, because I love God so much, I don't want to do anything that would hurt God. That was the purpose of Daniel's heart. He didn't want to hurt God. God had been good to him. God had blessed him. God had given him all of this wisdom, this understanding, all these things that we talked about. And he said, I can't hurt God. God's been so good to me. Listen to me. God is good to you. And as you get older, you'll see more and more of that. You'll recognize it more. God is good to you. So can I say this? Purpose in your heart that you'll give your life to the Lord. And here's something else that Daniel did. Daniel led the way for others to do the same thing. Now Daniel's the only one that's mentioned here, 
But y'all know about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. You know what they did. How many of you know what, what they got thrown into? Somebody tell me what they got thrown in. A fiery furnace. That's right. Can anybody tell me why? Because they did not listen uh, to the king. They would not do what the king told them to do against God. They took a stand. Now, I'm going to tell you something. What they faced was not, was scary. I can't help but think that it was a little scary. But they loved God so much, and they trusted God so much, that they said, it does not matter what happens to me. I will not dishonor God. And Daniel, Daniel's stand gave them the courage to take the same stand. We know Daniel got thrown into what? Not a fire furnace, what? A den of lions. He got thrown in. Can anybody imagine that? Getting thrown in out of a bunch of hungry lions? Does anybody know why Daniel did that? Because he prayed. Because he prayed. He prayed and he wouldn't stop praying. And when he was ordered to stop praying and pray only to King Nebuchadnezzar, he said, I can't do that. I've got to talk to God. I'm going to tell you something. I, I'm just truthful. It ain't easy. And sometimes it can even be very scary. But can I say just like Daniel did, Daniel come out of the lion's den, I've told people, here's what I think. I think Daniel cuddled up one of them lions up there in the midnight hour, pulled that, pulled that fur up around him, just went to sleep, just like he did his house with his baby. I believe that's how much confidence he got in baby. Now, I don't say that, and don't say it, don't say it. Amen. I can use my imagination. God gave me that. And the Bible tells me that when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in the fiery furnace, what does it say they were doing in there? Anybody tell me what was they doing? Um, praying. No, they was walking around. I think they got cold. What? They was walking around to stay warm. Huh? That's my imagination. Now, that's that's the so crazy preacher thing. Yes, sir. Yes, they were probably burning to them. No, they didn't burn. The Bible says when they come out, they didn't even have the smell of smoke on them. That's how good that God is. Trust me, when you take a stand for God and you help lead others, God will prove himself over and over and over again. Now, when I, as I close tonight, let me say this, and I'm going I'm to close. The best thing that you can have in your life is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This whole weekend, that's what this whole weekend really is about, is, is helping you to have that. The best thing you can have in your life tonight is the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, preacher, there's a lot of things I don't understand. Let me tell you this. I've been preaching for 20, 28 years, and there's a lot of things I don't understand. But here's what I do understand. I understand that Jesus loves me. I understand that Jesus died on the cross for me. And I understand that because Jesus rose from the dead, He can save me, and He can give me eternal life. And I believe in the book of John chapter 10, it says this, Jesus said, I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Let me say this, and I'm going to quit. I have, I have an abundant life. My life is good. <coughs> I had to go home <coughs> between services today and get a trailer pull that old truck home. But you know what? That's all right. I've still got it good. God's still good to me. I've got a broke truck. God's still good. Hey, my wife came, was able to come back with me tonight. Sitting there with me. I was able to see my boy preach. Hey, God has been good. But you don't really recognize that unless you have the Lord in your life. And I just want you to know that Jesus loves you. And what Jesus did on the cross, in the tomb, and coming out of the tomb, and what he did for me, he will do the same thing for you. Because he loves you just like he loves me. So as I close tonight, just a little bit, I, I want you to understand who you are. Y'all good youngins. Good youngins, just like these children in Israel were. Good youngins. And the king wanted to change all of that through their education, 
through their speech, through how they lived their lives, uh, through their identity, through all who they were. He wanted to turn them into somebody completely different and mess them all up. Don't let the devil mess you up. Give your life to Jesus now and give your whole life to him. And as you grow up, you'll find that God will use you in some wonderful, wonderful ways. Wonderful ways. I'm going to let Brother Terry come if he, if he will, if he wants to. But I, I, I hope that something we've said has been a help to you. Give your life to the Lord. And follow somebody like this brother right here. Good, good man of God. Love this man to death. And he'll, he'll do you nothing but right. I know that. Some of you, your parents and, and these folks, listen to them when they're talking to you. They want to help you. Amen. Give your life to the Lord. Brother Terry. Amen. Every head bowed, never eye closed, every Christian praying, every heart searching. We want to give just a quick moment of invitation. If you'll bow your heads and you'll give us just a moment. Nobody looking around. The quicker you do that, the quicker we're going to get out of here. I want to ask you tonight, now the brother come and he preached to you tonight. And we need to realize that this could be the only opportunity we have to meet him. Could be the only opportunity we have, the last opportunity we have to come know Jesus. Yes. So I want you to know right now this altar is open for anyone, for any reason. You want to come and pray. You want to come and give your life to the Lord. Just come on right now. Maybe you're here today and maybe you've never accepted the Lord as your Savior. And you feel the Lord calling you right now. Would you be honest with yourself and honest with me, honest with God? Just stick your hand up and say, would you pray for me? I'd like to be saved. I'd like to be saved. Hope everybody here tonight knows that they're saved and ready to go. Hope that they know that they know that they know. If you're here tonight and you're not sure or you're a little afraid, listen, I understand how the devil works. And we surely don't want to give the devil a place here, but I want you to know you have a friend in Jesus. And you have a friend in us. When we leave this service tonight, if God's dealing with your heart, you didn't get out, but you still have some questions, or you want to know more about being saved, I ask that you could take me or Brother Joey or one of these other men by the hand and say, would you just pray with me? Would you pray with me? I hope tonight that we can all leave with the full assurance of knowing God. Anybody else want to come before we pray? Hearts and minds clear. We're going to ask Brother Johnny to pray for us. Dear precious Heavenly Father, come to you again, God. God, I just thank you for all that you do for us. God, I thank you for this day. God, I thank you for these young folks. God, yes, Lord, God, we thank you for the to be with them, thank God. You, Lord. Just thank you, God. God, God just let them hear enough. what you're saying, God. God, God, just let them hear these questions, God. Just let them hear. Lord, I pray, God, that you're in control, God. No matter what the situation. I pray, God, that you'll move in their lives, Lord. And allow them, God. God, I just ask you to touch them, God. God, just to be able to serve me. God, I don't know how hard and cruel were we. God, I just ask you to be God. I pray you prepare us to be able to help us. Or home life, whatever's going on, God. Lord, wherever church they them. might attend, or whatever they go to help them here, see that they I pray God you'll shore them up. Trust you to take care of them. I just ask you to go with them, God. Go with us the rest of the day, God. Touch the services tomorrow, God. Just be with them. Touch the preachers that's going to be here tomorrow and Sunday, God. God, touch these young folks, God. God, just let them see you, God. If they don't see nothing else, God, if they just know you, you love them, and you'll take care of them if they'll let you, God. God, just touch us. Help us to be yeah. alive. God, help us not to be a stumbling block this week, God. So we just thank you and pray. In the Son's name I pray. Amen. 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 Yeah, I'd like to appreciate Brother Joe and Brother Caleb for coming.